Good morning. Good morning. You know what to do and how to do it. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Read along with me. Get the scriptures. Come on. Just as if I. Just as if I. Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Hmm? Hmm? Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Jonah, my man Jonah. We're going to read chapters 3 and 4. Uh total, that's a total of 21 verses. Um, just to tell you, this is meat, but it's going to be washed down with a little milk. Okay? Jonah chapter 3. And the word of the Lord came on to Jonah the second time, saying, first time, the Lord, you read the book of Jonah today on your own. Lord's like, go to Nineveh. I ain't going, Jonah said. Lord creates all this ruckus and he gets swallowed by a fish. Okay? And you gotta remember scripturally, a uh, fish and a whale, okay, the classification of a whale that man has put onto it, differentiating it from a fish, okay? It's the same thing scripturally, you gotta remember that, okay? Okay? But he gets swallowed by a fish and then pukes, gets puked back up. Okay? So, the Lord, in mercy and grace, <laughs> true grace, unmerited favor, says to Jonah, go, go do what I told you to do. Arise. Go on to Nineveh, the enemies of the Hebrews. They were enemies of the Hebraic people. And vice versa. That great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So here is a staunch Hebrew, Jonah, the son of Amatai. Okay? Yes, a staunch Hebrew. Reluctantly, not forced. He was not forced. See, again, the Lord orchestrated quite a circumstance for Jonah. And then after the fish done puked him out on the land, it's like the Lord's like, you're going to do what I said now? Okay, he didn't force him. Again, more evidence that if the Lord really wants you or wants you to do something, he's not going to force you to do it. But he's going to make things really difficult for you to say no. Son, continue. But the fact that the Lord is sending Jonah, a bitter enemy of the Ninevites, and vice versa. I'll let you unwrap the deliciousness of that morsel of meat yourself, okay? All right? But, arise and go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee, but the Lord wanted. And Jonah, being an enemy of those people, it's like, okay, you want me to go, Lord? All right. All right. He could have, you know, of his own done anything. Okay, but then again, he was humbled, wasn't he? Uh, you could say, broken! So Jonah arose and went on to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. That's pretty big. 72 hours' journey. On foot. That's, that's pretty immense. Okay, that's a big city. I forget what the distance, walking distance of Chicago from uh, north to south is. Okay, but anyway, let's continue. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey. And he cried, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. 
That's pretty simple, isn't it? That's pretty simple. You mean Jonah made a big fuss all out of all that? All he had to say was what? Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Eight. Eight words. That's all he said. Eight words. I Christians like to argue, well, the, the Hebrew, oh, shut up. Eight words. Look at them again. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Overthrown is one word there. Eight words. That's all he said. Hmm. Not much of a sermon, is it? But look at what happened. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. There is on the channel here uh, a video that was done about Jonah where some twit tried to tie in this sleazy believism nonsense, not rightly dividing the word of truth, of course, like they don't. Um, this is a work. They did a work, okay? It's not grace by faith, you stupid sleazy believism devils, okay? You're not stupid. Excuse me. You're not, you're not all stupid. I mean, there are those of you who know exactly what you're doing, you wicked devils. But, okay? So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and he laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published to Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. But let man... And beast be covered with sackcloth, and cry mightily unto God. Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way, and from the violence that is in their hands. Who can tell if God will turn and repent, and turn away from his fierce anger, that we perish not? Now, you think about this in our context of today. Nineveh, go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, okay? These atheists uh, who <laughs> believe that we evolved over millions and billions and trillions of whatever years ago and that we were sniveling pieces of snot that came out of water, they will tell you they are progressive, progress. Man is getting better. Is, are we? No, we are not. Man is getting worse. Matthew chapter 10, verses 14 on to verse 18. And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable, tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Sodom and Gomorrah were overthrown like that. Okay? Um, they were not Find it for me. They were not warned. They they say, uh, well, you know, Lot preached to them. O okay, okay, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But a final stern warning before judgment came was not found in the book of Genesis. Uh, yes, Lot was a just man. Yes, he was. Who also offered up his own daughters instead of having wanting the men to rape the male angels. Because there is... No such thing as a female angel. Okay? But, you know, he handed over his own daughters. And he was a just man. Okay? All right? But, Sodom and Gomorrah were overthrown like that. The people of Sodom and Gomorrah would look at what is going on today and be like, oh, that's kind of nice. We didn't th even think of that. Because remember, Sodom and Gomorrah, that's where we get the term Sodomy. Okay? All right? Yeah, this guys of Sodom, if, you know, seeing what, you know, looking up, <laughs> seeing what's going on, it's like, 
Oh, wow. Wish we would have thought of that. But see, that's so wicked, we never even thought of that. And man's getting progressive. Or man's progressive, excuse me. Huh? Man's getting better. You're out of your, you're out of your cotton picking mind, man. <laughs> what are you doing? Just as if I. Just as if I. Let's continue here. We're reading on the what? 14. 18, excuse me. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Yes. Be therefore wise as serpents. That doesn't mean that we're supposed to think like the devil in order to... No, no, no. Don't be ignorant of his devices. Don't be unaware of how they operate. Okay? Be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Don't fight fire with fire. Don't go down to their level. Okay? But beware of men, because Satan is, is a fan of man. He's all about flesh, okay? But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. And while we're here, go to chapter 12, verses 39 on to verse 42. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so, and see, that's not a contradiction. Scripturally, okay, a whale is a fish, to, scripturally, okay, Man, I forget what it's called, some one of you, about the classification of a whale. Well, a whale isn't a fish. Um, God says it's a fish, but he says it's a whale right there. Yes, he does. But according to the scriptural classification, it's a fish. Okay? It's not a contradiction. Nice try, though. Okay? Whereas Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Yes, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Yes, yes. The men of Nineveh repented. Just believed, huh? No. They turned. They did a work. Different dispensation, of course. We're not saved by the works of the law today, so shut up. No, we're not. Okay? But they're turning from one thing onto another. From their own selves onto a greater. That's how that works, okay? All right? Men of Nineveh, who we will see, didn't know the difference between their right hand and their left hand, okay? They weren't the brightest. They drank wine out of skulls, for our, uh, you know, as far as we know. The sworn enemy of the Hebrews and vice versa. But yet, a Hebrew is sent on to them. Like I said, you unwrap that yourself, okay? Men of Nineveh, sinners, wicked. Look at this today. Evil people of a hundred years ago look at what's going on today. It's like, oh, that's, we were bad. <laughs> we this this is preposterous, preposterous. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. It it ought to be hor horrifying to you that when we read in scripture some like Sodom and Gomorrah, the men of Nineveh. Okay, when you put that in comparison to what is going on today, and you think man's getting better. Oh, share what you're smoking. <laughs> you're crazy, man. You're absolutely nuts. Okay, let's continue. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. 
God was manifested in the was manifest in the flesh. Okay? Yeah. The Mashiach, Jesus Christ, is come in the flesh. God the Father, right there. Hmm. hmm. Go back to Jonah now. Let's finish that chapter up. And God saw their works. You <laughs> but then again, you gotta remember the sleazy believism teacher. Teacher, the ones who push this garbage. Okay. They are banking on the ignorance of people, number one, not reading the scriptures, and number two, not rightly dividing the word of truth. That way they can get away with anything, okay? It says right there, and God saw their works. We are not saved today by the works of the law. The repenting that we do is repenting of ourselves, that we are gods, that we know we're better than God. We are turning from ourselves, okay? That's the repenting, all right? And that is a requirement in order for the Lord to save you, okay? So when you get some schmuck coming along and say, well, this is by grace through faith, you, you can't read English. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them. And he did it not. God's the justifier there. But just as if I, Jonah 4, Jonah 4, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was very angry. Oh, I, I, I love Job. I, I mean, we're going to read I love Jonah. Got an attitude. <laughs> and he prayed unto the now. Get this. Get this. Let's read this slowly, okay? Pay attention. Don't, don't look at me. And he prayed unto the Lord, who did Jonah, and said, I pray thee, O Lord, okay, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Hmm. Did you catch that? Let's read that again. And he prayed unto the Lord and said, I pray thee, O Lord, was not this my saying when I was yet in my country? Did you catch it? Did you catch it? The woman that thou gavest me, she did get me up the tree. I did he. Keep reading now. Come on. Therefore I fled before you, before unto Tarshish, like Saul. Therefore, when I saw that you weren't coming when you said you were, when I saw the people getting a lot of crazy, I'm bradizing this, uh, went all crazy, I forced myself. And I made an offering, King Saul. I just bradized that terribly. Okay? I forced myself. Therefore I fled before unto Tarshish. For I knew that thou art a gracious God. Amen. And merciful. Amen. Slow to anger. Praise the Lord. Right, brother? Sister? <laughs> right? And of great kindness. Hallelujah. And repentest thee of the evil. Oh God, you're a little too nice. Do you, do you see what's going on here? Do you see right here Jonah's problem? Jonah's in heaven, of course. But do you see what his problem was? Do you? You save people, no. You lost people, don't. Because that's you. You are your own God. You are your own God. In chapter 1, he's like, I fear the God of heaven. He's a guy, he is, he's, a, he, he's a Hebrew. Okay? But right here, the audacity that Jonah, 
a Hebrew, a Jew, sent on to his enemy to preach unto them. And they repent by doing works, different dispensation, and God spares them. You're too, Lord, come on. I, I told you you were going to do this. Okay, I knew you were going to do this. All right, that's why I ran, because you're too kind. Is he the God of the Hebrews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Even in that dispensation. But see, in this dispensation, you if you wanted to be right with God, you had to specifically go to the Hebraic, the, to the Hebrews, to the to the law of Moses. Okay? Okay? We cover that in the one video about Jonah. I can't remember the title of it, but I'll find it and it'll be in the description box for you. Okay? I love this. Look at this. Verse 3. Therefore now, O Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Oh, a little self-righteous there. Think about this. Jonah, because the Lord sent him and his enemies repented and God spared them mercifully. Therefore, Jonah's thinking at this time, it's like, oh, great. Our greatest, one of our greatest enemies are going to be spared because of something I did. I'd rather die. He would rather die than acknowledging someone who was once his enemy, at for a moment at least, repented. For those who are my enemies, ex off, except for one, and I'm not even going to go there because I get too furious when I start thinking about that scum. But with my enemies, I would rejoice. I want Mr. Baggy Eyed to be my brother. I do. I doubt that's going to happen, but I do. I do. Okay? Some of these people, brethren, who are our enemies, could you imagine if they were our brethren? You think like that sometimes? I know, I know, I know. I know the downside of it. I, I get that. You think like that sometimes. But see, what's going on here? What is Jonah doing? Just as if I. Then said the Lord, Do us thou well to be angry? Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? So, let's read this up. So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city and there made him a booth and sat under it in the shadow and sat under it in the shadow till he might see what would become of the city. It's like, can you imagine, you know, he, he, Jonah's attitude, you know, a little puffed up, you know, a little, just as if I, okay, sitting there, oh, Lord, I hope they, I hope you have, have, I hope you destroy them, I hope they don't, I hope they don't. And while Jonah's going through this little thing of his, and the Lord God prepared a gourd and made it to come up over Jonah, that it might be a shadow over his head to deliver him from his grief. So Jonah was exceeding glad of the, the gourd. The object rather than the one who provided it. The blessing rather than the blessed sword. You see the connection. How many of these people will rejoice in the blessing rather than the blessed sword? Okay? All right? You see this way too much with this disgusting Christianity. Trying to separate God from his blessing. He is. He is. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Is. He is. Jesus is our salvation. 
Jesus is the redemption of the purchased possession. Jesus is our all. He is God. He is the Father. He is. Okay? He is. And you see Christianity wanting to separate that from him. Whatever it is. And they will focus on the tangible thing, the blessing that they receive, rather than he himself. I know you've noticed that. How can, how can you not? Let's continue. But God, but God prepared a worm when the morning rose the next day, and it smoked the gourd that it withered. And we're not going to be able to take anything with us when we die. We're not. Okay? Jesus Christ, He is our everything. He is our blessing. You know, I, it's been brought up to me before by some atheists, and it's a fair question. It's like, okay, it says we're justified by faith, justified by his blood, justified. What is, what are we, Jesus Christ, okay? Jesus Christ, yes, we are justified by all those things, but from whence come that justification? From only one. And it's not ourselves, and hence, the vileness of fake grace sleazy believism. Because while they on the surface say, well, we, our justification comes from Christ, um, you talk with, and every single solitary one of them, without exception, some takes a little bit more creative means, but every single solitary one of these sleazy believists it always comes out. They are better than so-and-so. I am saved because of what I did. Every single one of them. Without, except, without exception. Every single one of them. And it came to pass, when the sun did arise, that God prepared a vehement east wind. The wind boisterous. See, Jonah, he was more focused on the blessing rather than the blessor. You get it? I know you do, saints. And the sun did beat upon the head of Jonah, that he fainted and wished in himself to die, and said, it is better for me to die than to live. Jonah's attitude, you got to admit, was pretty, um, And God said to Jonah, Doest thou well to be angry for the gourd? Doest thou well to be angry for your gourd? Whatever it is. And look at his response. It comes out. It comes out. Finally. Look at that response. And he said, I do well to be angry. Even unto mm, death. I. Just as if I. Oh dear brethren. And look at, look at our Lord's response. Then, the, then said the Lord. Uh, <laughs> thou hast had pity on the gourd. For the which thou hast not labored. How do you say you're saved by just by you just believing, huh? With no turning from your self righteousness, without being broken, without uh, taking responsibility that he died because of you, huh? And you don't fear him that if he don't save you, you're going to hell. And in that broken state, you don't cry out to him. Huh? Those are works to you? Yeah, yeah, huh, pal? You do well to be angry, even unto death, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Then said the Lord, Thou hast had pity on the gourd for the which thou hast not labored, neither madest grow, 
which came up in the night and perished in the night. And should not I spare Nineveh, that great city, check this out, wherein are more than six score thousand persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand and also much cattle? Who is Jonah? Who in the name of Hades was Jonah? Speaking of Job, our beloved Job, go to Job 40. You, you figured it out what we're talking about. I know you have. And I got to tell you something, brother, sister, enemy. This has been a brutal kick to me today as well. So, <laughs> okay. Because when you get right down to it, brethren, people, enemy, oh, we can sure come up with all kind of colorful, creative ways to justify anything. What's the saying of the Jesuit? The end justifies the means for the greater glory of God. Which God? Job 40, verses 1 on verse 14. And the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that contendeth with the Almighty instruct him? Oh God, I knew you were uh, too kind to these people. He that reproveth God, let him answer it. God, I, I believe... I believe I'm justified. Are you a good person? We're all good. See, you, see, you blow it right there. See, you blow it right there. You blow it. Because you're seeking to hide yourself within a number instead of taking personal responsibility and accountability. Yeah, you, 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 loot, you blow it right there. You, you expose yourself for your wicked nakedness right there. Every single one of you, you sleazy believers. Every single one of you. I, I, those of you who are like working like with the, you know, Catholic or whatever, whatever thing of Christianity you are. Okay? And remember, Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered onto the, st onto the saints. I make, as the scriptures does, make a differential uh, distinction between what the world says and what God says. Okay? Let's continue. Then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay mine hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man. I will declare, oh, I, just love, I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. We covered this in a video last week, I think it was, but let's continue. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? Isn't that what Jonah did? Justifying himself. Hast thou an arm like God? Well, apparently if you can save yourself. <laughs> or canst thou thunder with a voice like him? I've heard some people who, you know, even some of you said that I'm pretty loud. <laughs> right? Okay. Deck thyself now with majesty and excellency. And array thyself with glory and beauty. Ooh, kind of like the anointed cherub, which we're going to look at a little later. Okay. Cast abroad the rage of thy wrath, and behold every one that is proud and abase him. Look on every one that is proud and bring him low, and break down the wicked in their place. And tread, excuse me, and tread down the wicked in their place. Hide them in the dust together, and bind their faces in secret. Then will I also. Then will I also confess unto thee the same, 
Then will I also confess unto thee that thine own right hand can save thee. Do you not realize when you take your salvation into your hands, you're calling yourself a God, a God. Ye shall be as gods. You will be like the Most High. But you don't see that, do you? Of course not. Why? Just as if I. That's why. That's why. Okay? John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Let's look at this. John chapter 8. For, am I in the right place? Yes, I am. Verses 30 on to verse 48. This is meat washed down with some milk. Can't handle it? Go away. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Thou believest there is, uh, there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Then Jesus said to those Jews which believed on him, If, now this is a big if, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, even you sleazy believers, believers teachers, okay, you have to acknowledge this, even though you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Did Jesus Christ die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures yet? Come on, we all know the answer to that. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. So what does that mean? The law is still binding salvifically, okay? The law was still salvific at this time, okay? All right. All right, we got to remember that, okay? And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? Some will go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, and you know, if, he de if we deny him, he'll deny us. Uh, that's not talking salvifically. Okay? If you come to the Lord on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, call upon his name and he save you, you're once saved, always saved, sealed until the day of redemption. Okay? You can't lose what isn't yours to lose. But you sure can lose the blessing. See? See, this is the point. You can lose the blessings, but you will not lose the blessor. Okay? You can't. Because he dwells within you. See, this is why you have to have your eyes on Jesus rather than focus on the blessing itself. He is the blessing. Okay? So many will focus on, on the tangible. But see, that comes from the Lord. Don't ever lose that, okay? Don't ever lose that. Because Christianity has blurred that and makes you the object of your own thing. And what happens? Jesus then is a genie in a bottle to you? Just as if I. Now, Look at this. Look at this. Okay? Now, remember, that's a significant if. Okay? All right? Now, dispensationally, doctrinally, this was binding under the law because he hadn't died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet. Instruction and in righteousness, okay, we're once saved, always saved. Today, we sure can lose a lot of stuff but we can't lose what isn't ours to lose anyway. Let's continue. Look at this. Then they answered him, We be Abraham's seed. I'll write that down. For link. Okay. We be Abraham's seed. Just as if I... Look at that. Don't look at me. Look at that. And were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? That's pretty, that's, 
Come on, you gotta admit, that's pretty blatant self-justification, isn't it? Come on, come on, come on. Jesus answered them, answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Servants have choices. Slaves don't. And the servant abideth not in the house forever. Mm -hmm. But the son abideth ever. Also dispensationally there. The servant abideth not in the house forever. House, the house of God. Before the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Eternal security. Once saved, always saved. Was not under the law. And when you got these devils trying to tell you it is, they're lying to you. Okay? Watch out. But the son abideth ever. This dispensation today. When saved, always saved. When you come to him on his terms, not because you boot the door out of the way, who is Jesus Christ, and go up some other way. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. I know that ye are Abraham's seed. I, I, I know, guys. Come on. But ye seek to kill me because... My word hath no place in you. Doth not my word uh, break in pieces like a hammer? Okay, hold your place here. And let's go to the obvious. Hebrews chapter 4. Okay, Hebrews chapter 4. My word hath no place in you. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. I was right at it. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's a person. Okay, what do we see? Soul and spirit and joints and marrow. That's a body. Man is spirit, soul, and body. We're made in the image of God. Okay, go back to John chapter 8. I speak that which I have seen with my father. And ye do that which ye have seen with your father. They had more look, look at look at this. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Just as if I Oh, but they believed. But yet they're justifying themselves. You know what the difference is? Obviously, but you know what the difference is between a saint and someone who isn't saved? We have our issues. Unless you're some jerk from England, we all have moments where we are hypocrites. But at the end of the day, a saint can't and won't justify themselves. Oh, we will have moments when we will. But at the end of the day, when we finally get our legs taken out from under us, when we finally get beaten down uh, in chastisement, and our face is on the carpet and floor, we won't justify ourselves. We won't be like, well, if they hadn't done, I wouldn't have. If you hadn't done this, I wouldn't have. What, are you saying Jonah wasn't saved? I, didn't you hear me? Yeah, I believe Jonah is in heaven, but you got to remember, under the law, eternal security wasn't there. Okay? It was under the law, faith and works. Okay? Sroncho. See, that's the thing. You want to justify yourself. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus saith unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. The works. And Paul makes the differential between that. The difference, okay? Between his faith, while well, James concentrates on what he did. Two different dispensations. Okay? All right? Book of James is written for the Jewish Hebraic people during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, but see, these people who do not rightly divide the word of truth like to blend that together. Okay, it's no, no. Paul is making the difference between the faith of Abraham while James is making uh, what he did. Okay, 
during the time of Jacob's trouble, which is again faith and works. Okay? All right? And this, again, come on, come on. Did he die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures? Come on. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. The law was still binding salvifically. Okay? No eternal security. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Justify their self. Just they believed on the Lord Jesus, right? But all the while, what are they doing? They're justifying themselves. Now, granted, we saints, we have our problems. But, you know, at the end of the day, we may cling to that. And, hey, I have a pride problem, okay? Oh, boy, I have a pride problem. But you know what? You know what? When I think I'm about to, like, uh, on Tuesday, it's like I'm laying there, it's like, I'm going to go. This is it. Okay? All right? <laughs> All right? There's no, there's no justifying ourselves. It's the Lord who justifies. Not we. Not us. And when you go around, well, I just wait. You're justifying yourself. You have no concept of what grace really is. None. None. Hence, fake grace. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. See, he says it right there, of myself. While they, in uh, 33, okay, 39, <laughs> 41, these who believed, but yet, Justified themselves. Okay? Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Ye are of your father the devil. Yes. And the lust of your father ye and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Comes from himself. Okay? For he is a liar and the father of it. Which of you convinceth me of sin? What are we reading to? Verse 48. And if I tell you, and if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Verse 48. Now see, in verse 33, 39, and 41. Okay? 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Okay? <laughs> yeah. While they justified themselves in 33, 39, and 41. What happens? The Lord puts the nail in the coffin. You're fake. Get away. You, you, shut up. Shut up. The devils also believe and tremble. What happens? What happens? Then answered the Jews and said unto him, They turn the tables and they attack the Lord. They turn the tables and they attack us. <laughs> Every time. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? Right there, man. It's right there. <laughs> it's right there. John 19. John 19. Let's look at the epitome now of self justification. John 19, verses 1 on to verse 15. Let's look at this. 
Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And the soldiers plaited a crown of thorns and put it on his head. And they put on him a purple robe and, say, and said, Hail, King of the Jews! And ironic, he is. King of kings, Lord of lords. Lord of lords, King of kings. Okay? Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not of the Gentiles also? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Okay? And said, Hail, King of the Jews! And they smote him with their hands. Pilate therefore went forth again and said unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Read Isaiah 53 sometime. Do you good. Then came Jesus forth, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. And Pilate saith unto them, Behold the man. Here he is. When the chief priests, therefore, and officers saw him, they cried out, Cru saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Take ye him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Look at this. If they, if they had eyes to see, they would have known. But they didn't. Why? Because the Jews answered him, We have a law. Just as if I... Oh yeah, we have a law. And by our law he ought to die because he made himself the Son of God. There it is. Okay? There it is. Self-justification. See, they read the scriptures, but they didn't believe the scriptures. Okay? They thought in just a mechanical reading of the scriptures that they would have life. But see... If you don't believe what you're reading, you're not going to get any life out of it. Okay? <laughs> and how can ye believe if you seek honor that comes from one another? Hmm? See, the Spirit of Truth, who is the Lord Himself, He will lead you and guide you into all truth. Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. Why do you think there are so many out there of these devils who rarely use any scripture? And if they do, it's so infinitesimal okay they can get uh, and some do will glean across the surface but they don't go deep why because they're not of us let's continue okay when Pilate therefore heard that saying he was the more afraid and went again into the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus whence art thou but Jesus gave him no answer then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and power to release thee? Think about who he's saying that to. But look what Jesus says. Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. These wicked idiots will take this to try to uh, say that God is done with his own people, with the Jews. Heresy. Heresy. They, they've, you know, uh, re replacement, uh, placement theology, okay. They come to this and it's like, well, see, the Jews are done. No, no. Think of it this way, too. I don't hate these poor people who are deceived by the disgusting vileness of sleazy believism. I don't. I don't. Because why? It's very appealing to what? The flesh. Of course it is. Of course it is. But the ones who are the proponents of it, teaching this nonsense, you guys, doesn't look good for you. Doesn't look good for you. And from thenceforth, Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art, ne thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king, speaketh against Caesar. Oh, look at that little manipulative tactic there, which is prevalent in a lot of these devils. As you know, As some of you know, they were speaking the truth. They really were. 
but they were using it in a manipulative fashion. Why? Just as if I, they were justifying themselves. And when someone seeks to justify themselves, dance like a marionette. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover. What are we reading to? 15. And about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. Now, in order to justify themselves, look, they were justifying themselves. We have a law. But the law and everything pointed unto Christ. Okay? And in order to me, the, the end justifies the means, right? They were, hey, you let this guy go. You're no friend to Caesar because whoever makes himself a king is, a, is an enemy of Caesar. Hmm? See how this works? See how these people who seek to justify themselves work? And it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour, and he saith unto the Jews, Behold, your king. Look at this, look at this, look at this. But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered. The chief priests, the one who pushed this. Not the, I mean, yes, the, a, a lot of the common people were led astray by those who push it. Those who are led astray, you're not innocent. You're still going to be, because you're yoked up with them, you're still going to suffer as they do. But it's going to be worse for those who knowingly did contrary. Be aware of that. That doesn't make it uh, any less for you. Okay, but you're warned. But look at this. The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Now, there are a plethora of verses, and we're just going to just touch very few, very few. But there are a plethora of verses that we could go to to show, you know, King of Kings, Lord of the Lords. But uh, let's go to the obvious. Psalm 2. Verses 6 on to verse 12. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. The Pharisees had these very scriptures, but yet they denied him. Yes, it was prophesied, yes, but if anyone should have known, it was Pharisees, Sadducees, the scribes. But yet that was the ruling class that influenced the others to lead them astray. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. And they asked, Art thou the son of the blessed? And he said, I am. And what did they do? Whist! Blasphemy. Right? Same thing with them, with them on the cross. They're like, Jesus is on the cross. And they're like, hey, come on down. We'll believe you. If the Lord would have come down from the cross, they would have gotten their stones and tried to kill him anyway. Why? Just as if I... Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way. And what was the faith which was once delivered unto the saints called the way? It really was. Little stupid had, had that one right. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Hey, we saw they believed, didn't they? But yet, what were they doing? This doesn't mean that we don't, aren't justified for doing what the Lord says. 
But see, when you go to about to justify something that you know is contrary, all right? And then uh, John 4, John 4, like I said, there are so many to show that who Jesus, you know, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. We're just touching on this. Verses 21 and verse 26. And John 4. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. What is Jew? That, that one's got to be, uh, because what is Jew? According to scripture, Jew is relegated onto the Hebrew. And the one verse in Esther where many became Jews, okay, that's one verse. Scripturally speaking, a Jew onto the Hebrews. The Jew was given the law. Not those of Japheth or of Ham. Okay? Okay? But the hour cometh. And now is, when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. A. Meaning there's another one out there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, at least. Yeah. You take out the A, the a. How are you supposed to know which one is which? Oh, you go to a phallus house and you, you listen to some guy who has a $100,000 piece of paper on his wall given to him from the Jesuit order. Which say, well, go to the Greek or the Hebrew. Well, shut up. God is a spirit. And they, which, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh which is called Christ. The Savior, Messiah. Messiah. Mashiach. Christ, anointed one. Jehovah saves, Jesus Christ, the anointed one, Christ. When he has come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee, John Hagee it was who said Jesus never claimed to be the Messiah. You're right. He didn't have to. I that speak unto thee, I am he. He did not say I am the Messiah. No, he didn't. You're right. He didn't need to. Just like when these guys say, well, Jesus never said he was God. You're right. Jesus never said I am God. All he said was I am. And that was enough for the Jews to take up the stones and to try to kill him because he called himself the Father. Watch out for these people who do that. It's very subtle. He never said he was the Messiah. You're right, he didn't. He didn't need to. But he acknowledged that he was. Jesus never said he was God. You're right, he never said, I am God. He didn't need to. He said, I am. Okay? Watch out for that one. Watch out for that one, okay? Now, let's go to the actual bulk of what we're going to be addressing. Proverbs 14. We are going to be reading verses 7 on to verse 13. Go from the presence of a foolish man. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. A foolish man behaves, acts, speaks, as if he says in his heart, there is no God. Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. Look at verse 7. Go from the presence of a foolish man when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1. I told you this is meat washed down with a little milk. Proverbs 1. Verses, uh, what are we reading? Verses 10 on to verse 16. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, 
Let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down to the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their, refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Look at verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And by the way, I don't hate them. I despise them. Hate? Here's the spies. Okay? Here's the spies. You think you're so clever. <clears throat> the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, knowing something. But fools who say in their heart there is no God despise wisdom. And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Okay? All right? Uh, while we're at it, Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. Verses 2 on to verse 5. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord pondereth the hearts. God knows my heart. You're, you're right, he sure does. Uh -huh. To do justice and judgment. Well, nobody can judge me but the Lord. Huh. Well, you're right, the Lord does judge you, but see, how does he judge you? Through the scriptures. Huh? And since we judge ourselves, the Lord judges us through the scriptures. Uh, hence, we are able to judge others through the scriptures ourselves, too, because we first judge us. See how that works? Watch out for these idiots who say, don't judge me. Whenever anyone says anything like that, they're seeking to, just as if I themselves... Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. And high look, and a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked is sin. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but of everyone that is hasty only to want. Hmm. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8. Proverbs 8, verses 11, on to verse 21. For wisdom, now there are two wisdoms. There are two wisdoms. Okay? There are two wisdoms. For wisdom, now there is a wisdom that is of God, the fear of the Lord, and there is a wisdom of this world, which is of man. Okay? One that comes from God. For the wisdom, for wisdom is better than rubies. And all things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. And find out knowledge, knowledge of witty invented, inventions. Fear of the Lord is to hate evil. What is the first thing mentioned? Pride. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. I am saved because I. I, okay? Fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. Brad, you said you have a pride problem. Yeah, I do. And I also have a thorn in the flesh, and I also have brethren and a wife who keep me in line when I need to be kept in line, okay? Fear the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the froward mouth do I hate. I hate every evil way. Counsel is mine, and sound, sound wisdom. The wisdom that is of this world is not sound. It's subjective, isn't it? Come on, even you atheists will admit to that one, okay? I am understanding, departing from evil. I have strength. By me, kings reign, and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, 
and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yea, durable riches and righteousness. You know how Paul talks about, you know, um, you know, uh, at being at the judgment seat of Christ and our rewards, how precious jewels and stones and stuff like that will abide fire while things of the earth, wood, hay, and stone, stubble, uh, wood, hay, stubble gets burnt up. Okay, durable riches, the fear of the Lord. Get it? Okay. Riches and, and uh, eh. riches and honor are with me. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold. Yea, than fine gold, than my revenue, than choice silver. The fear of the Lord, which is, you know, we covered this recently, is likened unto a woman, a beautiful, it's feminine, meaning that it's more beautiful than anything that we can behold, the fear of the Lord. It's not calling the Lord feminine because the Lord is masculine. He is Father, okay? But the fear of the Lord is feminine, likened onto the beauty of a woman, okay? Remember that, all right? I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance and I will fill their treasures. You know, in the relation of a father and mother with a child, okay? The father is the discipline, the structure, the rules. The mother is the one that is the that gives on to the riches of those rules, of those things. That's why it's imperative that there be father and mother. That's not a choice by I mean that's not available for everybody. I get that. I get that. I get that. I understand that. There are people out there who, you know, their father died or their mother died or whatever. I understand that. But see, the family, the structure, God, man, woman, child. Not God, woman, child, pet, man. that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. Okay? And that's the fear of the Lord. The fear of this world, the fear of man, of course, we go to James. We go to James, chapter 3, verses 13. Yes, James chapter 3, verses 13 on to verse 18. Who is a wise man and endured with knowledge among you? Let him, let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom, see there are two wisdoms. God is a spirit. There are two wisdoms. The one that comes from God and the one that is what? This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, I'm saved because I just believe. I'm saved because I ate Christ. I, I'm saved because I'm elect. I'm saved because I'm a Baptist or whatever nonsense. Just as if I. For where the envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. God, there's no hypocrisy in God. There is hypocrisy in us, unless you're some jerk devil from England, okay? There is hypocrisy in man, but not in God himself and his word, okay? Gotta remember, man is fallible. And the right and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that Okay? Okay? 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 and 34. 1 Corinthians 15, 33 and 34. Be not deceived. <laughs> Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. 
For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Now see, this isn't a contradiction. Paul, like all the saints, believe in not sinning. But what happens? That which I do I allow not, but that which I do I hate, sin. You realize we can't be sinless. Sinless perfection is impossible. You want to be sinlessly perfect? You got to be dead and go home to be with the Lord. Okay? All right? But we strive not to sin. Okay? Whereas some out there, just as if I, because they simply believe, therefore they can get away with anything and say, hey, don't worry about it. And don't lie. You know that's what you do. Where were you guys who were admonishing that guy when he was being used by a devil? Where were you telling him, hey, brother, don't fight fire with fire? Where were all you, his friends? Where were you? No, you were egging him on. Right. Right. Where were you then? And see, Paul, I mean, Romans 7, any questions about that? That will be in the description box, okay, for you, okay? Paul believed in no sin. So do I. But guess what, Jack? You wake up in the morning and you have this morning, sometime today you're going to sin. The, even the thought of foolishness is sin. Okay? Praise the Lord. <laughs> For his mercy endureth forever. But see, and here's the ultimate thing. Job 9, just one verse, verse 20. Job 9, verse 20. And see, the thing about Job is, under constant duress and wearing of the stones, we talked about this, uh, the Job thing, okay? We talked about this. Job eventually did what? Contrary to what he said here in Job 9, verse 20. If I justify just as if I myself, mine own mouth shall condemn me. If I say I am perfect, I shall also pro prove me, it shall also prove me perverse. If I justify myself, my own mouth shall condemn me. If I say I am perfect, it shall also prove me perverse. Well, I don't think I'm perfect. Yeah, but you save yourself because you just believe. Of course, belief is integral. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But see, you, you don't want brokenness. You don't want contrition. You don't want the fear of the Lord. You don't want prayer. You don't want calling on the name of the Lord. You skip over all of that. You're justifying yourself. Hence, that's evil. That's evil, man. Proverbs 7, 14, verse 8. The wisdom of the prudent... Prudent, I wisdom, dwell with prudence, remember? Prudence is a direct result of the wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Where the wisdom of this world, hey, if it feels good, do it. And justify yourself. The wisdom of the prudent is, a under, is to understand his way. But the folly of fools who say in his heart there is no God is deceit. Proverbs 18 Proverbs 18, 1 and 2. Through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh and intermittleth with all wisdom. All wisdom. Uh, what was it, the last video? Where Solomon, what did Solomon do? It's like, let's see what's so good about y'all getting schnuckered or doing all this stuff. Let me see. I want to experience what these guys, so I can see what you're doing. Intermittaleth with all. You, you, you get your little pen and you circle that all wisdom. We're not supposed to intermittal with all wisdom. We are to be wise as serpent, not be ignorant of the enemy's devices, yes. But we're not supposed to indulge in that wisdom that is earthly, sensual, devilish. Prove it to you. Verse 2. A fool who says in his heart there is no God hath no delight in understanding but that his heart 
might discover him itself. Right there, you have every single easy, uh, sleazy believism heretic there is. Depart from evil. You should, but don't worry if you do it. You're okay. I'm okay. You're okay. We're all okay. Don't lie and say that's not how it is. That's how you guys put that stuff forth. Indulge. Okay. Oh, okay. And Proverbs 28. Today's the 28th. Okay. This thing about the heart. Proverbs 28. 25 and 26. He that is of a proud heart stirreth up strife. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. See, your salvation is of yourself if you save yourself by your own belief. Your salvation is of yourself if you're eating a cookie. Your salvation is of yourself because there was something special in you that you were elect. Do you see how this works? You're justified just as if I. Okay? Okay? And of course, we have to because of this topic. We have to. Jeremiah 17, we have to. I mean, we have to. We have to. I can almost do this verbatim. The heart is deceitful and desperate, and the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. You know, I, I, I truly do not know how much time I have left. But you know, if my heart gives out while I sleep or I have a heart attack, the Lord is just. He's given me a good life. He's given me m many years. Watching my diet, but st stuff is still going on. I can't justify it. I can't justify it. If I'm here, it's because he wills it alone. Beloved, my best friend, I'm going to be sending you something in the mail. And I'll talk to you about this at a later time. Something that, in case something happens, is when you will look at it. We'll talk about that later. I just wanted to put that out for you, okay? All right? But see, now here's the thing. We have looked at those who look to justify themselves, and let's go to what those who justify themselves don't want to acknowledge. What is that? Romans 3. The most hated section of scripture to the sleazy believest. 10 on the verse 18. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth. There is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. In the way of peace have they not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. And what does Paul say in Romans chapter 7? 24 and 25. O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin, meaning I can't, I can't be sinless down here. I can't. Romans 7 expository video will be for you in the description box. Okay, don't be ignorant. Watch the video before you shoot off at the mouth. Okay? All right? 
We can't justify ourselves. We can be justified in doing the work of the Lord because we are ambassadors, yes. But a saint at the end of the day, thy will be done. Verse 9 in Proverbs 14. Fools make a mock at sin, but among the righteous there is favor. Fools make a mock at sin. Romans 6. Romans 6. Romans 6. Romans 6. Come on. I'll, I'll get to that later because even there are certain enemies of mine who will watch this to the end. So, Romans 6, verses 1 and verse 3. What shall, we can, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Let's sin that we have more. The more sin we do, the more of God's grace we have. Uh... God forbid! How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized, identified, okay, into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death, death to self, death to the world? Your body is not yours. Okay? Well, let's, the more sin we have, the more grace we have. No! No. Someone newly saved. It's like, well, okay. The more sin, no. We're supposed to refrain from sin because we're ambassadors for Christ. Okay? All right? Romans 6, verses 15 on to 16. Another uh, example of this, but in a different way. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. He, the sleazy believers does exactly that. Hey, don't worry. You're eternally secure because you just saved yourself. You, okay, you shouldn't, but don't worry about it. That's why these guys aren't that hard against sin and more are hard against those who talk about godly living. And they call us heretics. Okay? You don't see these guys getting on each other for their foul mouths that they use. You don't see these guys getting on each other for, uh, for trying to abstain from sin. No! No! They get on others for uh, others who are rightly saying, hey, you should abstain from all appearance of evil. It's like, you're a work salvationist. You're a Pharisee. You're a devil. You go to hell. Okay, pal? And see, they give themselves away with verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants, making a choice, ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness? Now, we, we saints, we sin all the time, we do. Unless you're some idiot jerk from England. I, I ain't even going there. I ain't even going there. Okay? But, all right? And see, what do they do? Just as if I. Exposed. They're exposed right there. Isaiah 5. Isaiah 5. And I'm telling you, oh, we can come up with so many ways to justify anything, can't we? Isaiah 5, 20 and 21. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Well, I'm, 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 a, I'm saved, so I can do anything I want. <laughs> all things are lawful for you, but not all things are expedient. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes 
and prudence in their own sight. Let's keep reading to verse 23. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine, and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward, just as if I, the wicked for reward, and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him, which are prudent in their own eyes, and prudent in their own sight. Galatians 5, Galatians 5, Galatians 5, 3 and 4. For I testify, now, we don't keep the law to be safe today, okay? We don't. There are those out there who teach that you, you got to keep the commandments, Commandments were there to show us that we can't keep them perfectly, but we need God, okay? We've talked about that, you know, uh, in depth, okay? But Galatians 5, 3 and 4. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect unto you, whosoever you are, Whosoever of you, excuse me, are justified by the law, ye are fallen, fa fallen from grace. I gotta put, I gotta make mention of this guy, Mark the Messenger. Okay, the, that's this time that video will be in the description box. It's a good video where we debunk this. Okay, uh, you are justifying yourself by you gotta keep the commandments. Uh, no, you don't keep the commandments today. The commandments were our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. That doesn't mean that we aren't under commandment unto the Lord, okay? And you read about that in Romans chapter 13, okay? But, the, you know, the Ten Commandments, you can keep those even if you try, okay? And see, you got people coming along today saying, you got to keep the commandments to be saved. Uh, no, you couldn't do that. Only God manifest in flesh could do that. Hence, since he did that, the sinful flesh was justified. Okay? Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2. And see, here's where the concept of grace fails the fake. Galatians chapter 2, 15 on to verse 18. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, Nature. Remember, Jew is equated onto the Hebrew within Scripture. There is that one exception, which will be in the uh, videos, what is a Jew, which will be in the description box, okay? <clears throat> Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Okay, check your margin if there's a, there it is, Romans 3. Okay, Romans 3, which the sleazy believism heretic takes, doesn't, doesn't add the other parts to it. They cut that out because they don't want to be judged. They don't want accountability. Okay, all right. Verse 17. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are found to be sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Think Now roll that around in your head a little bit. Okay, roll that around in your head a little bit. Hmm? Christ never sinned. No, not one time. When you take it upon yourself to save yourself, verse 18, for if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Transgressor. Look at those three eyes there. For if I Build again the things which I destroyed. I make myself a transgressor. But if while we seek to be justified 
by Christ. Trying to live like Christ, meaning you don't sin anymore. Hmm? Hmm? Trying to take the Sermon on the Mount and apply it doctrinally for today. Okay. Christ, Paul talks about this, about the thing of godliness, that he is an example for godliness being separate. Yes. Okay. But see, when you go to the Sermon on the Mount to try to apply that doctrinally for today, not instruction in righteousness, but doctrinally, what are you? Are you a little Christ? Hmm? Are you a little God? Uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, 2 Peter chapter 2, just one verse, <laughs> just one verse, verse 22, but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned again to his male own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her female wallowing in the mire. Hmm. How many of these people come to Christ? not broken of their self-righteousness and decide that they are saved because they take it upon themselves. And then they go back to their own old ways and justify it. Well, I just believe. You know why that is? Because, see, a new creature in Christ is someone that has Christ in them. Hence, you save yourself, pal. You're not a new creature. Second, and here it is too, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9. 2 Corinthians 12, one verse. Verse 9. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Every single one of these free gracers, excuse me, fake gracers, every single one, without exception, it all comes around back to I'm better than they are. I'm special because I save me. You have, you have no concept of what grace actually is. None. You don't. You don't. You don't. You can look it up in a dictionary. You can even do a word study. But you have no concept. Why? Because you haven't been broken. Proverbs 14, verse 10. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. Hmm. Now we've talked on this before, but the heart knoweth his own bitterness. Acts. Acts. The heart knoweth his own bitterness. Hmm. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Okay. Oh, and you wicked charismatics, bat water baptism is not um, salvific, uh, not for salvation today. Be in the description box. Acts chapter 2, not 3, Brad. Verse 37. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Pricked. A little blood comes out. What shall we do? What shall we do? What, what are we going to do? But there's also a contrast. Acts chapter 5, verse 33. Acts chapter 5, verse 33. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart. What happens when someone when someone is pricked in the heart? What, what do I got to do? They'll search the scriptures. They'll ponder. They'll get on their face. Lord, show me. When someone is cut to the heart, you know, just as if I, like we saw in John chapter eight, 
as we saw in John 19, as we see here in Acts, when they heard that, they were cut to their heart. And what happens? Instead of, what shall we do? What happens? And took counsel to slay them, just like they did to the Lord Jesus. They justified themselves, and then when they couldn't justify themselves, they turned it and attacked him. Acts chapter 7, well, just the one verse in Acts chapter 7. Okay, verse 54. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Psalm 69. Psalm 69. A Christological psalm. Beautiful psalm, by the way. Beautiful psalm. Beautiful psalm. Psalm 69, 5 under 12. Now, we're, I'll point this out to you because there's, a, a, there's a, a shift in this, okay? Like there are in almost all the Psalms, okay? There's a, where it uh, changes direction, okay? Some have multiple, but in virtually almost every Psalm, almost every Psalm, there's Psalm 117, that's two verses, <laughs> okay? But, okay? Verses 5 on verse 12. O God, thou knowest my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. Not Christological. Okay, Jesus never sinned. David behaved as if he said in his heart there was no God. Let not them that wait on thee, O Lord, God of hosts, be ashamed for my sake. Let not those that seek thee be confounded for my sake, O God of Israel. The way you serve God reflects him. How do we apply this for instruction and in righteousness? Lord, don't let the people who see me lose my cool get sidetracked because I act like an idiot. Okay? These guys who say they're saved and curse... And talk about oral sex in their... I'm not, we're not even going to go there. Okay, the, yeah. Curse, talk, profanity, and, and corrupt, and, and yet they're saved. Okay? And somebody comes around and like, that's Christian. You're right, that is Christianity. That's not the faith that was once delivered onto the saints. You would do better for yourselves if you at least with your nonsense, try to have some understanding departing from evil. But no, you indulge in it and justify, just as if I. You would be a better. You would be better if you could at least do that. And Paul Beck's like, I don't. Okay, I don't want anything to do with you guys. Okay, but no, you don't. You're whores. You take everyone always. Okay, but want to separate yourself from the true brethren and call us the heretics. Yeah, yeah. You're of the world, therefore the world heareth you. Okay? Verse 7, Because for thy sake I have borne reproach, shame hath covered my face. Okay? Verse 8, Christological, relating unto Christ. I am become a stranger unto my brethren, and an alien, there's alien, unto my mother's children. Jesus Christ had brothers. Okay? Jesus was not Mary's only child, Catholic. Okay? All right? Christological. For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee are fallen upon me. Christological, obvious. Okay, what are we reading to here? Um, verse 12, okay? When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that was my, to my reproach. I made sackcloth also my garment and became a proverb to them. They that sit in the gate speak against me. And I was the song of the drunkards. Drunk with the wine from Catholicism. Yeah, you're Jesus, yeah. (sighs) 
John 7. John 7 again. John 7, 25 on to 29. John 7, 25 on to 29. Not again, excuse me. John 7, 25 on to 29. Then said some of them of Jerusalem, Is not this he whom they seek to kill? But lo, he speaketh boldly, and they say nothing unto him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is very Christ? How be it? We know not whence we know not this man whence he is. He became a stranger unto his brethren. He became a stranger. Hmm. See, when us saints preach the true Christ, the world has been conditioned to, if they think anything of Christ, they're to, which Christ? Which one? Okay, which Christ? Huh? All right, which one? Huh? Which Jesus? There's all kinds of Jesuses. Okay, which one? See, we the saints per, uh, give the true Jesus of the scriptures. Oh, you got you got the Baptist, the Catholic, the sleazy believers, the Calvinist Christ. Which one? They don't all serve the Christ of the scriptures. But they're like, how be it? We know this man whence he is. But when Christ cometh, no man knoweth whence he is. Keep reading. Keep reading. What are we, okay? Uh, what are we reading to? I <laughs> beg your pardon. On verse 29. Then cried Jesus in the temple as he taught, saying, Ye both know me, and ye know whence I am. And am not, and I am not come of myself. But he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. And while we're in 7 here, while we're in 7, look at verse 4 of 52. Look at verse 52. And they answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look, for out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. Where was Jesus born? In Bethlehem. But see, they th like he came out of Galilee. He was raised in Galilee, but he was born in Bethlehem. He was born in Bethlehem. They didn't know who he was. They didn't know where he was, was from. They might have known the actual place of his birth, but they didn't know that Jesus Christ is the Father. They didn't know that he was the Messiah, even though they had the very scriptures that told them that. They didn't have the eyes to see. See how that works? Revelation 3, verse 20. Revelation 3, verse 20. Revelation 3, 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. But see, you got to go through that door, which is painful. Why is it painful? Because you got to be broken of your self righteousness. You got to take responsibility. You can't hide and be, well, everybody. No! I put Christ on the cross. He died because of me. It was my fault. And that's what's missing in so many of these Christians. Well, we're all sinners. Yeah, we are. Ask him. Was it your fault that Christ died? Your fault specifically. Watch him squirm. Some will be like, yeah, but... Yeah, be, shut up. Is it your personal fault? Oh, the guy in the square. You know, <laughs> just believe and receive. We won't get into detail. But I asked them, 
Was it your fault that Christ died? It's everyone's fault. He kept evading. He wouldn't answer. And I got in his face a little. It's like, if you were saved, you would be, well, yes, I put him on the cross. He kept going this way. This way. We all, we, we, we. See, that's the context when you'll be like, yeah, I put him there. But they evade it and want to hide with everyone else. And those who compare, compare themselves among themselves are what? Verse 11 and 12 in Proverbs 14. The house of the wicked shall be overthrown, but the tabernacle of the upright shall flourish. Verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Romans 6, Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Proverbs 7. Proverbs 7. Proverbs 7. 25 on to verse 27. Proverbs 5, 7, verses 25 on to verse 27. Let not thine heart, thine heart, Guard your heart, for out of it come the issues of life. Let not thine heart decline to her ways, go not astray in her paths. For she, Rome, a fake wisdom. For she hath cast down many wounded, yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Her house is the way to hell, going down to the chambers of death. And all the whores religions, which is not faith that was once delivered on to the saints. Ezekiel 28. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And no marvel also that his ministers are transformed as the ministers of righteousness. No one can judge me but the Lord. I'm not judging you. Just believe and receive. God has a plan for your life. Where does this come from? Doesn't that sound good? Sounds beautiful, doesn't it? Sin. Doesn't it look beautiful? Oh, it sounds so good, doesn't it? She dangles it right there in front of your face. And just as if I... Cheapen in grace without even having a concept of what it actually is. Ezekiel 28. 12. Ah. Let's read this whole thing. 11 on in verse 19. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Ye shall be like the Most High. You will be like the Most High, yes. Ye shall be as God's only good and evil, yeah. Look at how beautiful you are because you decide what is right and what is wrong. And just as if I, yourself all along the way. Thou hast been in the Garden of Eden. Excuse me. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. This is talking about Satan. Just like what the Lord did with Peter, when this shall be far from thee, Lord, and the Lord's like, Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest the things that be in men, not of God. Okay? Every precious stone was thy covering. Those beautiful, sparkling stones that sparkle so bright. Bright, sparkling, glittering stones. 
Have you ever seen an actual ruby when the guy held it up to the light and it, it's like, whoa, dude, what are you doing? Hmm? And a, a real ruby. There are, I, forget, I forget what those fake ones, uh, not cubic sarcoma, I forget, but um, an actual ruby. And there's something when, when long ago, looking for something for my wife, it was like, you know. <laughs> but anyway, but yeah. The stones, they glitter, they shine. When light hits them, right? Angel of light. Thou hast been in the Garden of Eden of God. Thou hast been in the Eden, the Garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. The workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. With her fair speech, she caused him to yield. Just believe and receive. God loves you unconditionally. God's not angry at you. God has a plan for your life. You're precious. You're elect. Thou art the anointed cherub. And I have set thee so. Satan is a created being. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, and thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Satan has seen God. Satan knows what God looks like. So, why do you think his religions that he comes out with get kind of close to the real thing, but they're so far off? Because he has seen what God is. He has seen who God, Satan knows what God looks like. Okay? Some would argue, so then the depictions of the Roman Catholic Jesus are accurate. No. 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 Uh, because that's contrary to scripture. Um, there was no beauty in him that any man should behold him. Okay? You know, uh, Catholicism, Satan's church, wants you to believe that Christ is this effeminate looking man you know, so, no, no. You read Isaiah 52 and 53. Um, that's not this drop-dead gorgeous. But then again, to us saints, Jesus is, you know, precious. But he don't look like a girl. Okay? Thou wast perfect. In thy ways, from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. And of course, you read Isaiah 14. I will be like the, I will ascend above the stars of heaven. I will be like the Most High. You wanted to be God. You shall be as gods, no good and evil. Okay? By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the mist of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mounts of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the mist of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. I've seen some of these women, and some, even some of these guys, who are good looking and they know it, and they'll let you know it themselves, turn out to be the most rancid individuals you have ever, you know, I don't want to be blind, but you know, sometimes people who can't see are at an advantage because they can judge not for what they see first, you know. Uh, Fanny Crosby, thank you, brother. Right? Okay. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Because he was puffed up. I will cast thee to the ground, earth, I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. And you see that in, uh, uh, what is that? Revelation chapter 19. Okay. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities. By the iniquity of thy traffic. And there it is. There's the reference for Revelation 18 right there in my margin here. Okay. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. 
It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. How can a, only a devil working for the Vatican would say that well, Revelation 17 and 18 is America? Okay, watch out for that. Verse 19. Oh, wait. Let's read 18 again. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities. By the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth, in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. By the time some of these people who uh, wake up and realize they've been deceived, it'll be too late. What are you justifying in your life? What are you justifying in your life? Hmm? Are you justifying the Lord by the way you live? Or are you justifying your lust and behavior because all things are lawful for you? What are you, what are you justifying? See, a saint, a saint, even though we get stubborn, even though we, we have moments where we are hypocrites, even though we sin daily, at the end of the day, whether, whether the Lord takes our feet out from under us, whether we almost die, at the end of the day, a saint who has the Lord in them knows, I must decrease and you must increase. Behold, I am vile. What shall I answer thee? Once have I spoken. Twice, but I can't anymore. What am I trying to quote? You know. What am I trying to quote? Because, you know, brethren, I don't know how much longer I have to go. I really don't. I'm not going to die of old age. I'm not. I'm not. I don't, I don't say that for pity's sake. It's just a fact. I'm not going to die of old age. Job 42. Verses 1 on verse 6. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, and that no thought can be withholding from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. Wherefore I abhor myself, and repent, and dust and ashes. <laughs> Luke 16, <laughs> wow, 15. And he said unto them, Ye are they. Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts, for that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. You speak of the world, therefore the world heareth you. You itch ears, and you prophesy deceits. John 5, 44. How can ye believe? How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Hey, if you're going to do something against this video, now I give you respect. I hope, I'm, I hope you're not going to disappoint me. Hey, you make it this far. At least, at least put the link for this video in yours. Unedited. Like some people do, who will put a link, but yet they'll mess with it. 
Put the link for this video in yours if you're going to attack. Hey, you know, ever since the uh, stupid head video that I did, the Lord's like, you know, Brad, if you're going to do a video like that, you should also put the link for the video themselves so they can see themselves too. And you're right. You make it this far. At least have the stones to put the link for this video in yours. Unedited. Okay? That's going to be it for this video. I got to tell you something, brethren. We, we reach a point, and this will come with time, having your senses exercised, you know, through experience, that kind of stuff, you know. It'll come to you in time. You know, you got to be patient. But at the end of the day, dear saints, the Lord is the one who truly justifies us. And at the end of the day, there is no justification for ourselves except the Lord himself. Let's not forget that. So that's going to be it for this one. Um, this was not really what I was planning on doing today. You hear that a lot from me, don't you? Yeah, yeah, because this is not, this is not of me. I don't know how much longer I got. I really don't. Tuesday I got up at like, you know, Oh, I forget, it was like two stuff going on here. It's like, I got up, I walked, and it's like, oh, great. Okay. Okay. And I'm doing, you know, I'm back now. I've gone back on the diet. You need to know this. I'm back on the one-a-day meal thing and doing right. It's, if I knew that I was going to live this long, you, you youngins out there, watch how you live. Watch what you do to your body. Okay? Thank you for watching this if you do. And uh, brother, hopefully I'll talk to you a little later. Thank you to all of you. Love you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.